Hamstrings, consisting of several parts, semi-member noses, semi-tendon noses, biceps femoris long head, biceps femoris short head. It's a group of muscles. The biceps long head is running over two joints, the hip joint and the knee joint. I think you're all familiar with this. If you're not, stand up and leave. Then you don't know, <laughs> then you don't know your anatomy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody knows this. It's, uh, okay. Well, we do hamstring exercises quite a lot. I started off as a young and innocent and, and naive coach, like all of you. <laughs> and, um, okay. If you look at exercise, you look for three qualities in a hamstring exercise that match, matches the load while sprinting. Here's a very simple metaphor, a very simple example. I did pretty well as a track coach, so I'm driving a Ferrari. You know Ferrari? Italian sports car? Kidding, of course. I wish it was true. Or maybe not, I can sit in it. And every speed bump you go, pum, pum. <laughs> that's not very good. Okay, but suppose you have a Ferrari. And you drive at the highway, and uh, you go to Germany, at the Autobahn you can drive uh, 200 miles an hour with the damn thing. And in Holland, nah, it's just short, you know. <laughs> You're out of the country before you know it. But you do this in Germany, and driving 200 miles an hour, you can say, okay, you'll hear something strange. So you go to the garage, to the mechanic, and say, hey, my Ferrari isn't working very well. And... Uh, it's a small village, it's, well, let me drive around, let me drive around and try. And he goes, mm, 30 miles an hour, pff, nothing, nothing. He said, no, it's perfect, it's fine, doing fine. Yeah, it's doing fine at 30 miles an hour. It's not doing fine at 200 miles an hour, it's a different load. And here's the problem with many exercises and with analysis and with biomechanics. It's a different ball game if you drive 200 miles an hour, if you drive 30 miles an hour. Okay, so here we go. Hamstring exercises should be done to prevent problems at high velocity. If you're doing it at low velocity, it doesn't tell anything what happens at high velocity. You go, yeah, that's easy. But pam, 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 four or five times per second, that's a different ball game. There's a fast and alternate flexion extension in the swing leg. Yeah? And you have Five, four or five strides per second. So one leg is doing, if you see sprinting well, it's doing something else than the other. And a couple of athletes, it's not, like in kangaroos. Both legs are doing the same and all phases. You know, the kangaroo, both legs are working symmetrically. In sprinting, it's not. One leg is extending, one leg is flexing. And then the other way around, and then the other way around. It's a very fast alteration. And the hamstring is stretched under a load at the last phase, especially the last phase of the flight. Here. It's eccentrically. I bet you all know what eccentrics is, right? And it's not only the K-box. Uh, there's more to it than the eccentrics than the K-box. Not concentric. So looking for exercises, you have to have an alternating action, not two legs at the same. So a normal leg curl executed with two legs, mm, uh, uh, uh. It's bilateral, too slow. And it's two legs doing things at the same time. It's not specific. Alternating action, eccentric contraction, high velocity. Remember that, that's all. Okay, what did we do? At a young age, you coach young kids, and sometimes, mainly from other c c coaches, they. Uh, pull the hamstring and they come to me and say, hey, can I look at the hamstring? They say, I think it's lack of flexibility. Now there's something strange. The most flexible athletes are able to pull hamstrings and athletes who can't go any further than this don't pull hamstrings. That's strange. So flexibility doesn't seem to be a real factor in it. It's not conclusive. There's no strong correlation between flexibility, range of motion, and hamstring injuries. After you pull a hamstring, yes, there is, of course. Lack of strength. We heard the story that the hamstring pulls because the quads are very strong and the hamstring are underdeveloped. So the quads kind of overpower the hamstring and the hamstring snaps. So what do we do? Make the hamstring stronger. Didn't work. Didn't work. Not conclusive. 
still keep pulling hamstrings, no matter how strong you made the hamstrings, there's another factor involved, the velocity. That's the most important factor. So one of my mentors, a real genius, came up with a, another solution. He came up with other solutions all the time. <laughs> he kind of more or less invented velocity-based training. He invented the vibration platform, <coughs> hypergravity training, if you know what it is, hypergravity training. And he also said, look, what do we do? We put an electrode, EMG, no, don't leave this time. EMG is, uh, EMG is electromyography. It tells you about the, the recruitment of the muscle fibers. You put a very simple electrode on the quads, one on the hamstrings, and you made one little jump. You jump. And now you looked at the quad, uh, that, uh, EMG activity of the quads and the hamstring at the same time. I'll show the picture. 